This is Isaiah Cassidy. I'm Mark Lynn, and we're Private Party. And you're listening to the All Elite Podcast. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 42 of the All Elite Podcast right here on the No Holds Bar Network, your source for wrestling podcast content and more. I'm your host of the All Elite Podcast. As always, your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'm always joined by my co-host. She is the EVP of Giggles, the heartbreak chick, Tiffany. What's going on, Tiff? Same old crap. Same old crap. <laughs> Different day. It's good shit. It's good shit. It's great shit. You know, that was good shit. The All Elite Podcast. Our AEP Podcast. And our AEP Business Cards. And dun, 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 AEP Business Card. Dun, 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 coming across the screen. That's right. That's right, guys. Welcome to episode number 42 of the All Elite Podcast. Titled AEW to air on TSN in Canada. <gasps> Gasp? Question mark? We shall see. Uh, guys, welcome, as always. If you're new to the podcast, where myself and Tiffany like to go over what's going on in the AW world, keeping you guys up to date with what's going on, doing predictions, doing reviews of pay-per-views, and very soon the uh, weekly reviews of the AW on TNT show or possibly AW Dynamite, since now we're just down to Dynamite, which we'll get into today. And uh, also doing Beanie Elite reviews and giving you guys a catch up on the Road 2 documentary series, which are awesome and on YouTube. And if you're living under a rock, please get out from under that rock and go check out these documentary series. These are so awesome. You guys are want to go check this out. Uh, great stuff by our uh, great friends at AEW. Um, if you guys missed the last episode, very, very exciting. We had Rick Knox for our AEW referee. We did an interview with him. Awesome episode. Guys, do not want to go miss this. Please. Go back, follow, or go listen to this episode, watch it on YouTube, make sure you're hitting like, most importantly, and sharing it. It was such a good episode, Rick Knox. We learned a lot about him. You learned a, you learned a lot about his history and his feelings on stuff today and stuff on AEW. It's a really, really good interview. We highly suggest you check it out. We are not just saying that, so go check it out, guys. Live on the show right now. And give, give him a follow. It's Mad Mad Ref on uh, Twitter. If you're not, I don't know why you're not. He's going to be one of, the, one of the senior officials in AEW, so... Uh, yeah, check it out. Basically, that was such a great interview. I mean, oh yeah, he was so much fun. He he was fun, and mm-hmm. he's just so humble. I love interviewing these guys from AEW. They're just that awesome. And uh, we've reached out to more, so there caught possibly more on the way. Ooh. So uh, stay tuned. You guys are gonna want to stick with us. But the, yeah, the big news today. Um, well, not big news today, but title of the episode. Um, still Wayne, especially myself, since I'm Canadian. Uh, Wayne to see when we're gonna be able to catch. AEW on TNT up here because uh, a few WWE watchers, it's on the USA Network um, up here. It's shown on a channel called Sportsnet. Uh, there's been no confirmation recently of what's going on, but we have some news uh, regarding it, and there's a possible uh, TV deal on the way, so we'll get into that later. Um, other than that, not too much happening in AEW world uh, as far as anything else it's been uh, pretty normal sticking to announcing new venues um announcing upcoming matches for stuff they've done the road to documentary series which is really cool they've announced uh, the bracket for the tag team tournament a lot of i mean it's kind of silent but there's still a lot of news in between so i'm glad it's something we could talk about if something for us to talk about or else we'd have <laughs> nothing to talk about we just oh, here looking at the screen going hi the whole time, and I don't think anyone wants to listen to or watch a podcast about for about forty five minutes of just looking at the screen. <laughs> um, I mean, there's weird people out there, so who knows? The creepers might like it. Though. Oh, oh, not the creepers. They, they must. They they probably love no. that stuff. Um. Anyways, uh, let's let's get into the AW world. What's going on around that AW world? Um, they did announce a new uh venue that they're going to be going to, and it's on November twentieth. It'll be in Indianapolis, of all places, at the 
hilariously logoed Indiana something Coliseum. It's a farmer's Coliseum. Yeah. And then there's a picture of Garfield on the logo for the <laughs> arena. Not sure what Garfield has to do. I could be wrong. Maybe Garfield is, uh, is in Indiana or based out of Indianapolis. I don't know. But uh, anyways, the Indiana Farmers Coliseum is where it's going to be at. Uh, showtime at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are on sale this Friday at noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central uh, Central Standard Time, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So for you people in the Indianapolis area or wanting to travel down to Indy and you can to go catch some AEW on TNT, there's your info you're going to need for Indianapolis. So uh, still waiting for a Canadian city. I'm just saying... <laughs> patience, my child. Yeah, I know. Patience. patience, my young patience. Padawan. Patience. They're like all on like the East Coast right now. Yeah. I'm mean, waiting for them to come to New York. Uh, I imagine they're just gonna go like region by region. Like they're gonna start with the East Coast, like layer near. They're gonna go to like okay. the you know the middle yeah. of the United and make their way west, and then eventually somewhere else. But uh, I imagine they'll still come up here. I'd I'd love to come anywhere near here. Like anywhere in the Buffalo region would be great too. Um, but we'll see. But so far, just Indy. Uh, they did uh, with our last episode. We went over that they announced Nashville as well. Um, yeah. Let's go over this pretty cool thing I want to bring up. Uh, the AWN TNT Twitter posted it, and uh, they said, "Would you cop this merch if we did it?" And it is a really, really cool design of what an AEW action figure would look like. And if the action figures came like that, could That's, you imagine? <laughs> I I would buy that. I'm not a big collector. Mm-hmm. But that would look really nice on my shrine, and then I guess I would have to have another Matt autograph. I know that's that's <laughs> I, I love this. I am I was like I am, and I still am kind of still am a collector of figures. I was a huge WWE figure collector, and this is sweet. I really hope they go through with this. I'm sure they will. I'm sure. Yeah. It will so happen. that was the one thing they tweeted that was I thought was pretty cool. So uh, I think I think eventually it'll be into the works. I mean, that's going to be huge. I mean, the fig. The it. fig life in the wrestling community is huge. There's a lot of wrestlers that even have podcasts about it. So um, it would be, you know, dumb if they didn't get into that. And I'm sure they, they've thought about it. So yep. um, ops too, I'm sure as well. Yeah. Funkos. They've been, there's a, a couple of the AEW people that have Funkos from back in New Japan that are out there. Um, yeah. Let's the talk- Nick one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Mega one. It's one yeah. and two. So it's pretty cool. Anyway. Um, Let's talk about DC. So DC October second is coming so quick. It's almost here, guys. AW on Weekly TV is almost here, and we're so excited for it. I'm extremely excited for it because I'll be going. I'll be there live in DC. So if you're going to DC, hit me up. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know where you're gonna be, and I'll let you guys just if you follow my Twitter, I'll let you guys know where I'm gonna be. So you guys can come say hi. If you see me in the arena, don't be shy. Say a hi to me. We can go for a drink or whatever. I don't care. Um, but yeah, some uh, interesting things about uh, DC actually. So, one thing they announced is that Hangman Page is going to be appearing live, and I tweet this out. I'm like, this is interesting here because there is another advertisement that uh, says appearing live, and that was John Moxley. Yeah, that was set to appearing live. So we have two people here that don't have matches, but appearing live. Could we maybe have a spontaneous match between Hangman Page? I couldn't put it past him to do a match between Hangman Page and John Moxley. Ooh. Just a quick one one match there. I would love that. I'd love to see that. So both of them are appearing live in some way. So that was the announced match this week. And also Ooh. our boy. Oof. It's finally happening. Yes. MJF is gonna face our boy Brandon Cutler. I was so sorry. Stoked when this was anna- announced. Oh my god, I messaged Kyle. I'm like Cutler footage. <laughs> Cutler footage. Cutler footage. I tweeted at him and I was like, and I tagged Kyle and I was like, our boy Cutler footage. <laughs> Here we go one on one with MJF. They had some beef. If you've been watching Being the Elite, um, and if you wonder why we're saying our boy Brandon Cutler, we've done an interview with him. We stayed pretty good friends with him lately. Uh, over Twitter and uh, Tiff meeting him down at All Out Weekend. And um, I'm going to see if I can at least meet him in D.C. somehow or definitely going to catch up with him in Baltimore for uh, full gear. Mm-hmm. Um, we're really, really big fans of Cutler ever since uh, doing the interview, even through the Being Elite series. So um, oh, yeah. who's going to be doing the Cutler footage if he's in the ring then? Denise, are you going to have some uh, <laughs> extra work to do? Even if you're a seamstress, maybe you get to hold the camera. I mean, you'd have to be knowledgeable. I'm sure Brandon showed you the ropes a little bit. <laughs> the drone. I'm just saying. The drone. 
<laughs> is the drone going to be flying around in the arena? Oh, how cool would that be? I, I mean, I was, you know, at the Sears Center, I was there. He was flying it right in front of me. I thought it was so awesome. So maybe that'd be cool. That'd be neat. Um, so, yeah, those are the two things they announced for DC. I'm excited. Uh, DC already looks like it's going to be really, really cool. Um, it almost looks like more and more now that the uh, an announced main event already between uh, the Elite, Kenny, and the Bucks versus Jericho and Mystery Partners. It's almost like it's going to be – it's going to be LAX. Yeah, right? it's going to be LAX. It, that would be – it's not really a surprise now since they appeared at All Out. It's almost certain it's going to be them. I'd be shocked if it was another team that we don't know about. But uh, even if it's LAX, I think it's still going to be a huge match. Um, well, we don't know because – you know, we've, we've only got the announcement of 40% right. of the roster. So I think in theory, we're all thinking that it's going to be LAX. But can you imagine, like, throw us completely off and then there's, like, another tag team that we don't even know about? Right. <laughs> um, then they have the uh, Women's Championship match, which I'm excited for, between, uh, excuse me, uh, Nyla Rose and uh, Riho, which is interesting. It's still, man, like... I still, I'm still undecided with that match. Oh no! It's so like it could go either way because it could, it's like it screams squash. And then, what if Riho, which she, she's been doing it for the last couple of pay per views, pulls it out of the bag and ends up winning the title? And her as a first champion is huge for her career. Maybe they have a lot of faith in her. Maybe Kenny's putting a good word with the exec saying like, like I have a lot of faith in her. I, I'm familiar with Joshi wrestling. Like I know all about it. And I think she's gonna be the one to top everyone else. Like I maybe. hear through the grapevine that they're dating. Oh, one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if it's She's my true. girlfriend. You push her no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but I've been hearing through the grapevine, you know, from some people that dating. So, the grapevine. The AEW grapevine. <laughs> anyway, so that, so that looks cool. I'm excited for going to be there. I'm excited for you even to watch it, Tiff. It's going to be an awesome night. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. Speaking of... Uh, there was recent news that they trademarked uh, all Lee Wrestling trademarked uh, Dynamite, which we'll get into a little bit in the news and rumors later. Um, but this is a screenshot from someone who was going through their TV listings, and they go over to TNT and they scroll over to to uh, October, and it says All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. So they originally did trademark Tuesday Night Dynamite. It started out with Tuesday Night Dynamite, then it went to Wednesday Night Dynamite. And now it looks like it's just going to be called Dynamite, All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. Um, I don't know. Well, how you I saw, feel you about saw this. the tweet that Matt put out with the little dynamite. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but yeah. I just cool. I don't I don't I don't know how I feel about it. It sounds okay. All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. It's just, dynamite. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be so much jokes with that. It's got to be. Um, I don't know. It's I'm. To me, it's like the name at this point. It's almost like the name doesn't matter because we know we're gonna get regardless the product. The name's not gonna differ from what the product's gonna be. We're gonna get and Rick Knox said it yesterday best in his interview. Like the product, they're gonna be showing us something that's gonna be not shown with a lot of companies out there, especially like a WWE. Like the wrestlers aren't gonna be held back. They're gonna go out there and do what they love, and they're gonna do, they're gonna wrestle basically. Case in point. So regardless of what the name's gonna be, who cares? Let's go. Take let's, my mind. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's do this. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, leave a Bates over here. They're glasses. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's all. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> take hey. it and go. Take it and go. <laughs> okay, I'm going. Okay. Bye. Uh, let's talk about some brackets. All right, let's go. Bracket let's party. Yes. And okay, let's first go. of all, the graphic work that they've done for these graphic and the announcement, amazing, amazing yeah. balls. I love the production team for AW so far. I cannot. This just makes it even more. There's another aspect that makes it more exciting for AW. Um, so I got the full bracket here. I don't want to go over the individual ones they released. So I'll just I just got the full bracket for everyone so you guys can see. Hey the AW World Tag Team Championship bracket. Love that they're calling it World Tag Team Championships. I love the whole World Tag Team rather than just Tag Team Champions. The word world just means it, it means it makes the titles mean more, I think. Like the word world. Yeah. So um we had the first round matchup we already knew about the Young Bucks versus Private Party. Yeah. Um, 
I just saw Quint. <laughs> this I forgot like the that we were going to talk about this cuz we we're meant to talk a little bit about it the, on the podcast, but I actually just saw Quinn uh Saturday at Excellence Wrestling in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. He was teamed up with uh Anthony Gangoon, Mr. you know, number one husband, former partner uh, back in the day. Yes, they used the partner back then in the day. Mm-hmm. Um so Anthony put out and it was on my Twitter. Anthony put out this speech for Quinn and like he choked up. It was really touching and it was so nice to be there and witness that. But it was funny because when I was sitting in my car waiting for the doors to open and then I saw uh, Anthony and Quinn and Leroy come out of their car and I scared Leroy and then he came and hugged me, and then Anthony came and hugged me, and then Quinn came over and hugged me. So I'm not on the shit list <laughs> anymore, okay? I'm not on the shit list. I'm invited to the party, and they're just Ooh. amazing people. So Invited to um, the party, have a little bit of the bubbly. A little bit of the bubbly. Of the bubbly. I don't know. I'm going to be, like, biased in this whole tag team tournament. Mm-hmm. You probably can just go probably party the whole way. It's not a big <laughs> bracket, but it's uh, pretty good. Uh, and then we have the two uh, unannounced matches. So we got this yeah. was pretty in- insane. Lucha Bros versus Jurassic Express. So yes. Jurassic Express it looks like it's gonna be the official team name for uh, 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 Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. I mean, a lot of people love, and I'm one of them. I love the a boy and his dinosaur, but whatever. Jurassic Express, it is what it is. Um, but that's gonna be an insane. Yeah, first round matches that I wouldn't put it past Jurassic Express to pull up the upset over the Lucha Bros. Lucha Bros. still got some other dates to fulfill, and they're not really fully with AEW just yet. Um, still being, you know, the the AAA champions. I know that AEW is working with AAA, so uh, I don't think they're fully committed to us just yet, like locked down with us. So I I wouldn't put it past Jurassic Express to pull out a uh, um a upset victory there. Um, then we have the best friends. Yes, husband. Versus uh, <laughs> <laughs> versus SCU. I love it. Uh, and uh, we found out in this week's Being Elite who uh, two were going to do it. It was a pretty funny skit, which we'll get into. But it's going to be Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, my boy, uh, Team Bald, because I'm bald, but uh, I'm with the Team Bald. Um, SCU Team Bald is going to be the two friends that go out. That's going to be a good match. I think that's going to be an entertaining match. That's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be very, very entertaining. And then we have, obviously, the Dark Order with the Creepers, the, the great Creepers of, of Tiffany there. Oh, uh, getting the first round by, and they'll face the winners of SCU and Best Friends. And that is not scream well for the Best Friends or SCU whoever comes out of that because I have a feeling Dark Order is going to be in the finals for sure. I'm going to predict it's actually going to be a private party in Dark mm-hmm. Order in the first. Because we know. when we and Rick, yesterday, said it best. Their plan is, then he's like, don't be surprised that they push the new people out of the gate. Because they, they want to make stars. Why would you want to push a Young Bucks or a Lucha Bros to the finals out of the gate? That's not doing it. Yeah. Although Jurassic Express would be also a good pick. I'm going with the boy, our boys' private party to be in the finals against oh, yeah. the Dark Order, and I'm picking, unfortunately, the Dark Order to be the first tag team champions because I, I think it's a, it's it's just for some reason there's this thing behind these these guys, but or maybe they they do a a big private party, first time champions that would even be cool too. Um, oh. Bring home the gold, boys. Bring uh, it to New York. We'll save that prediction for later. I want to kind of see how it rolls out. But for sure, my like, prediction for the finals, private party, dark order. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. It's funny because I think our boy Jerry, JD from New York, is predicting uh, Jurassic Express mm-hmm. to win this. Um, we're curious. So you let us know in the comments what you guys think as well. Yeah, right. Drop down a uh, comment down below, guys. Don't be afraid. Make yeah. a free account. I don't care. I Drop us down. Who do you think is going to be in the finals? Let us know the two teams I, you think are going to be in the finals. I feel we're going to get private party. Absolutely, because I'm not. I'm being biased here because these are my <laughs> boys. I can't. I can't. I. I even told them I'm going to predict you like every episode or whatever. Mm. Uh, so I think it's going to be private party and um, hmm, SCU. Whoa! Yeah, that's a left field pick right there. Hmm. <laughs> SCU in private party. That's an man. If if this happens, I'm giving you full props on the next on that episode. I'm just saying. 
like, well, remember this. I'm, I'll give you full props. Like, I'll give you a standing ovation. I don't care. Um, or maybe I have to take. I'll, maybe how about I take? I have to take another shot of maple syrup if if you if your prediction becomes true. Oh, my crowd, my crowd. I still oh, gotta no. go through the crowd, you know. Like, but uh, yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, no, but I do think, okay, I seriously think LAX is going to interfere between Young mm. Bucks' private party and cost the Young Bucks, and that's going to build our feud between Young Ooh, Bucks and um, I love that. LAX. Yeah. Yes, that's what I firm believe it. Um, I know, like, they don't want to do too much of interfering, but I really feel like that's what's going to happen in mm. this. Um. Yeah. All right, that's a good prediction. I'm telling you, okay, I didn't enjoy that shot of maple syrup as well. I'll put that on the line. <laughs> so if you if your prediction comes through, I'll take a shot again on air. Oh, okay. God, I was wired for like hours after. I'm just letting you know that was a lot of sugar to take at one time. I guess it'll be an early episode if we're going to yeah. do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited. I, I love the whole – obviously, they're going to put a lot of stock in the tag team tournament because it's their thing, tag team wrestling in AEW. So um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I cannot wait for this bracket and for the tag team tournament to roll out. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Just, just I'm excited. It's I'm great. pumped. It's, it's amazing. I just, I've never been so excited for tag team wrestling. I think we could say um, we're glad that Jericho is, uh, sorry, Le Champion, Chris <laughs> Jericho, is uh, it, it, it's back and he's he's got his title in good graces and uh, we got a uh, future with him. He's got a, a championship match against Cody at Full Gear. Um, so yeah, Full Gear is coming is uh, coming up in Baltimore, guys, and uh, it's at the uh, Royal Farms Arena. Uh, live on pay per view, 7 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, cannot wait to go. I think there's still tickets available, so if you guys are still wanting tickets to go to that, and most importantly, the most important part of all this is that. Me and Tiff are together again, and yeah. we're going to be live in Baltimore for that weekend. Still working out to try to get maybe the Friday off, too, so we can maybe come a day early or not. Uh, we're still figuring out hotel situation or, sorry, Airbnb situation. Um, that will be all confirmed in the next couple of weeks. But uh, for sure, you're going to get myself and Tiff there at full gear. So if you're going to be a full gear, like I said back in, about the D.C. stuff, just, you know, come say hi to us. Don't be afraid. We're, we're not going to bite hard. I, I might bite. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or somebody might else be coming with us oh intent intent uh, so there's two confirmed matches we got moxley and omega finally going to get that match there I, I hope both of them stay healthy for that or else maybe this is just a match that keeps getting pushed back due to injury but i highly doubt it. i think they're both going to be ready for full gear cannot wait for that and then like i was just saying the championship match between chris jericho and uh Cody uh, Rhodes for the AEW World Championship. Which and, could uh, possibly change. Whoa. Oh, Fat Pharaoh. Oh. Hey. How'd you get here? How'd you get there? I don't know. He's he's, he's going to be coming with us. He's sneaky. Oh, he's going to be coming with us. So yes. Fat Pharaoh will be at full gear. Yes. Yes, he's coming. He he, he wants meet and greets. Mm. Is he, he going to be over. bringing his friend? His is new he, friend? going to bring your friend? Oh, regular fair. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Those two are so cute. Look at that. Yeah, so, but that Farrell is coming. Okay, so. good. Good. And stay fat. Stay pH fat. And he hasn't been Don't ever change, Fat Farrell. I don't care what they say about you. Don't you ever change. <laughs> You're a mess. I'm, I'm a mess. A mess. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's see here. How about we do some uh, Bean the Elite, shall we? Well, that was really squeaky. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into some Being the Elite theme song. Or theme song, as I'm reading it. Uh, yeah, Being the Elite, episode uh, 170. Jeez. Wow, they're already at 170. Getting close and dangerously close to 200. I'm not sure when that's going to roll around. I haven't really timed that yet. But uh, we're at uh, episode 170. Fingers crossed. Title was a of this episode. Short Kaiga episode. It wasn't as yeah. It wasn't too long. No, it was like 14, 15 minutes long. It was yeah. uh, shorter oh, than usual. Much, but yeah. Um. So, uh, we started off with uh, MJF in uh, Cody's office. He's uh, sitting there on uh, Cody's desk, and he's got his own. He got his own like name. 
plaques and there's like three of them <laughs> and they all have like a different <laughs> title. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was funny and he was talking about uh, how he got the pleasure or somewhat of a pleasure to announce the indie show and then he started making fun of Indianapolis like saying like just making fun of like the quarterbacks for the team, like Andrew Luck retiring early and Peyton Manning calling him overrated. And he's like, the yeah. most famous thing Indianapolis <laughs> is known for is the Indy 500. Ooh, race cars. Oh, look, the turn left. Oh, the <laughs> turn and left. I thought he was saying that Indiana is the land full of quitters. But yeah. He's... Yeah. <laughs> so he's just ripping apart Indiana. And then uh, eventually uh, he's just seeing like how he's best friends with TK and, and Cody Rhodes, he's like, if you don't know who TK is, and you know, not worth his time. And Tony Siobhan comes in, so we get Tony Siobhan in with being the elite now, which is great. And I was like, what are you doing? What are you sitting at Cody's desk for? And then she's like, oh, it's just, it's just business, Tony, just Tony. And he started making fun of Tony. And then uh, MJF left. Uh, and then Tony gets on the phone. Well, he called him a kid. He's like, he called him a kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then, uh, I forget what Tony says. He says uh, he has like a line right at the end where he like makes himself comfortable. And I didn't write it down. Oh crap! Yeah. <laughs> He's... All, I, all I wrote was that uh, when MJF yeah. was saying like, "Oh, don't call Cody," and then he pretty much like got on the phone with Cody. But yeah, yeah. no, I don't remember. <laughs> nah, someone will let us know. Someone usually lets us know what they said. Yeah. And then we got to the intro, and then this was uh, where I was saying earlier that SC was deciding who to who two play players were going to be, or what two members going to be in the tag team tournament. And they literally were just being so humble to each other, all three of them, like saying, oh, no, it should be you two. Oh, no, no, it should be you two because you guys have started this. You guys were tag team before. You were tag team champions before. And they're all just being – it was really just like a – corny humble funny kind of skit between the three and they eventually decided with uh uh frankie kazarian and uh, uh christopher daniels um which is interesting because i thought they would go i thought they were gonna go scorpio sky uh frankie kazarian so i think it's like too obvious because of the fact that they're the two young guys but yeah. maybe that's where like christopher daniels takes the pin oh I think maybe they can start some maybe like I don't I don't want them to split. I don't think they're I don't no. know if there's a story story to split these guys. Oh, no, no way. Absolutely not. I still think we're going to yeah. get like um, See, it's weird. I get this I still get the, the sometimes the WWE mindset, so like it kind of just play No. I, I oh, shouldn't no. be thinking that sometimes. No, because they're focusing on tag team and then I still think that we're going to get um um what's it called the like a triple yeah. uh, team Tag team, I think eventually, like, we're going to get that. So, absolutely not. SCU is way too over. Mm-hmm. Um, then we get the Young Bucks announcing a free meet and greet uh, at Cracker Barrel on September 25th in Victoriaville, California. Or Victorville, California. I'm guessing that's where everyone is right now. Because <laughs> even with Rick, we were talking yesterday. It looks like it seems that like everyone just lives in California, it looks like. Yeah, so. yeah they do, yeah. Um. So, yeah, the Cracker Barrel, if you're in California and you know where Victorville is, they're going to be doing a free meet and greet for everyone on September 25th. They're like, yes, and say so they are a sponsor. We're going to have to do this. And their food is good. That's and what they're good, yeah. Of course, we're going to see the pictures of them sitting in the rocking chairs because that's their thing that they do. They see, I, I, I've i never been to a Cracker and Being Canadian, it's not up here at all. And even when I'm in the States, I've never seen or been to one. Yeah, there's not one here in New York. The closest one to me is in Pennsylvania. So I've been... A bunch of times because I had a friend that lived in Pennsylvania. So That's every good. time I went to Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> biscuits. So oh they back God. it up. Okay. They're known for their biscuits. And, oh, my God, they're bacon. Oof. 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 Bacon. Oof. <laughs> oh, good. Um, then we get uh, some cutler footage. Cutler footage. Yeah, cutler footage. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, <laughs> he's in his new house. I guess he got a new house, which is cool. Uh, I don't. I hope. I think that's real. I I not, there wasn't really he never him or Denise never kind of I don't think they ever posted about a new house so you can't tell everything I know uh, so whatever they got a new house um he has a, the young bucks and AEW to thank for it and he's like oh you know with AEW now I can afford all this new BTE equipment over here and he's like showing all the equipment they got BTE is better uh the young bucks bring up uh how MJF and Sammy they're like we know that they've been bullying bullying you we've seen through eight, the the being the elite um. Young Bucks want Cutler to, uh, they're like, we know you're two-contract Cutler. 
Yes. Uh, we know you. You have the one contract to, to be the production guy, but we know you. We want you. To, we want you to wrestle. Yes. And like you're a two contract color. You have to live up to your contract. Well, Matt, Matt pretty much told him. Yeah. Uh, he goes. He goes. Tell Denise to get her ass in the sewing room to get you some new gear. <laughs> I was dying. I was. I was. I was not expecting I, that. I love it. But her tweet today. Wait, where is it? Getting my tush in the sewing mm. room today. Hashtag gotta make Matt yeah. proud. Hashtag BTE. Hashtag being the elite. Hashtag wrestling gear. Hashtag I sew. <laughs> of That's course, great. like I retweeted it and then she liked it. Mm. This is so awesome. I I hope me and Kyle get to meet her at Starcast. We need like a a family picture. Me, you, yes. Denise, and Ka- Brandon. <laughs> Yes! Oh my god. So, I, you know, I clip this and we can tag Brandon Denise in it. Brandon, Denise, <laughs> full gear, please. Please. A family picture with hashtag, me, Tiff, and you two. Your biggest fans, right yeah. here. Your biggest fans. <laughs> we'll even buy a Cutler shirt to wear yes. it. You will each wear it. <laughs> Don't do it. You know, we should have one. I'm just saying. We should. We should. We should. We, uh, we need a family picture. Ready. So yes. we'll clip this and then Tiffany, we'll, we'll tag you with it. Um, and they tell him they booked uh, Cutler in uh, October 2nd. And he used to face MJF and Cutler was psyched for it. He was he was really, really excited. I just love the whole thing. They call him two, co- <laughs> two contract Cutler. Um, he was pumped about it. And then uh, he's like, oh, I still got to show you guys the bathroom. And he's like, it's huge now. <laughs> oh, man, it was funny. That was great. Um, we got BT Mailbag. Oh, my God. Peter Avalon. Yeah, we got Peter <laughs> Avalon. Yeah. And he goes, he gets asked, what's the name of, going to be the name of his autobiography when it comes out? <laughs> he says, he calls it the librarian. Leave <laughs> me alone. <laughs> I Please. love it. I love it. <laughs> he just takes his glasses off and just gets pissed and walks away. <laughs> I love heel Peter Avalon. He's so good. I really like hope like the librarian thing goes. I like this whole like jealousy hate he's got for Leva Base because yeah. it all stemmed for when he like suggested to the both of them that they should go talk to creative to get rid of it. And mm-hmm. Lee was like, What are you talking about? Like, I'm actually a librarian. I'm certified. And he got pissed and jealous. Like, wait, you're like, wait, you're actually a librarian? What the hell? <laughs> So uh, I love this whole hate thing he's got with her. So that's pretty cool. And then we got uh, BT Mail with Kenny. And I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. If this is anything like last week, I'm like, why is Kenny answering BT after what we got last week? And, like, he's trying to do it, but he's just – he's just mind's not into it. He explains, like, his losses in AEW are affecting him. Like, he never thought he'd be going to AEW's, like, TV show with, like, a losing record. Um he says you can promise he's gonna do better. He's gonna do he's gonna do better for the fans. Do better for AEW. Um, and then they, we kind of transition to where the young bucks were like looking at the footage. And then Matt's like, "Man, we can't use this footage. Like, we can't. I don't care what Kenny's done for us. I don't care what he's doing. Like, we can't use it. There's something wrong with him." And then Nick's like, "Well, I don't agree. Uh, we inf- we included it last week, and the ratings were up." And he's like, "What's more important, uh, mm-hmm. our friends' well-being or ratings?" <laughs> The damn shots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we get back to Kenny, and then he was just – he just got worse. For what we got at the end here, he was acting like he was wasted beyond belief. <laughs> Kenny's a good actor. I'll give him that. Kenny's a really good actor. This was really funny, and that's how we ended it. Very short episode of Being the Elite, but uh, just uh, – I love that they're still continuing, like, inner storylines for Being the Elite going into the TV TV. So that just – I think it's a good sign for us that they're going to continue Being the Elite you know, while the TV things are happening. Like, you think about it, they're only doing the show one day a week. They have all the other days to, you know, still do what they're doing now. So they probably won't be as long, but they probably be short as this one. But I hope they do it. Rick Knox let us know yesterday that they take a lot of footage and Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff does not go on to BTE. Yeah, so I'm sure they'll do a lot of stuff taped backstage on Wednesdays for BTE. Maybe they have, like... The Wednesday night show, and then maybe BT is gonna have like a Friday release or the next Monday release, and they film a lot of stuff that week for the next Monday release. So I think it'll continue with it, man. They can't like BT is just so popular and so famous; they can't just end it, right? Right. So uh, yeah, yeah. That was BT. Uh, we had a road to double or nothing, which was really cool. They had a cool thing with uh, uh, Riho. 
mm-hmm. uh, which is really, really cool. It makes you an even bigger fan of her. So if you guys missed that, go check that out. That's also the same one where they did the uh, tag team bracket. So uh, go check it out. Episode three. Cannot wait for the next episode. Looks like they're going to continue that uh, schedule of Monday for being the elite and Wednesdays for row two. So I'm sure we're going to get two more episodes next week. Um, so we're stay so patient. Close. It's so mm-hmm. crazy. I see, keep seeing fans ask, like, are we getting another one? Are we getting anyone? Just they've been sticking to the same schedule. Why are you asking? That's just really changed. <laughs> um, <laughs> anywho. Anywho. Uh, how? about um since i remembered i haven't done the last or the last episode because we were interviewing rick knox but the episode before i (laughs) released you guys since tiffany's got her little thing with the list of husbands you know it's her thing i'll give her credit i'm doing a list of wives (laughs) well she she doesn't remember says i should do one day which i'm (laughs) doing it now i'm getting shit for it anyways i released my top eight last or my uh my first four last week from uh four to five um, which uh, I thought were pretty good, you know. Uh, I still got some criticism, I think, a little bit because of it. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Nothing Did you? With... Well, no, I gave you criticism for your top four. Oh, that's what top I'll... four. Your top four, because I know your top four. So I. Oh, that's right. Yes. I give shit for your top four. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, last week I did number eight, Dr. Britt Baker, uh, number seven, Brandy Rhodes, number six, Tennille Dashwood and number five, Tessa Blanchard, who I think should be up more, but well, I mean, that's not your list of wives. <laughs> you can have a list of wives. You put her up tough. Yes. We're, we're, me and Kyler are going to eventually like swap. He's going to do a list of husbands and I'm going to do a list of wives. I already know who my number one is. Anyways, anyway. so <laughs> uh, before I release it all, I'm going to make it make this a little bit suspenseful. So I'll start for you guys on watching on YouTube. So at number four, Hikaru Shida comes in at number four. Okay. So it's a, it's a good one if you guys know me personally, if you want to keep an eye on my Twitter. I'm kind of shocked. I'm a Shida fan. To be honest with you, because I really thought she was going to be number one. Mm-hmm. So Number three, <laughs> Tony Storm. Tony Storm, she's full. Oof, as you would put it. Oof. <laughs> Oof. She's damn hot. <laughs> number two, which a lot of people would criticize me and say, I'm surprised it's not your number one. Paige, which she forgot. Uh, I have. A, you guys have, can't I see it. it. I have a big shrine to Paige on my left here. Sh- Paige has been one of my favorites ever since I've watched her in NXT and found out her about her story. Um, and then number one, it's going to shock everybody. I was shocked. Um, just because I don't know what it is. I literally don't know what it is and why she's my number one. I don't know, guys. It just it's just just my head. Number one, list of wives. Alicia Atute. The AEW, I guess you can call backstage commentator or backstage uh, ring reporter. Uh, number one, for sure. I really thought Sheeta was going to be number one. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I forgot about Paige, and I know Kyle loves Paige. And Kyga, I think I got completely out of the WWE mindset that mm-hmm. I totally forgot about her. But I know Kyle's obsessed with her. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember I went to one of the WWE shows here at Nassau Coliseum, and I went to the bar with our friend Jimmy, and we saw her walking around. And I was trying to take pictures for Kyle to send them to I totally forgot about her. But, yeah, I really was... <laughs> I really thought Sheeta was going to be number one. I thought Paige was going to be two. And then I thought Alicia, um, Alicia Toot was going to be three. Who's no. actually going to be at the Wrestling Universe this weekend and at ICW on Friday. So maybe, uh, you know, like I'll go take some Yo, pictures um, with her. You know, I give him a number. You just kind of forward I, it to I, her. I and you. I got you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, Alicia Toot, number one. Wow. So, shocking as that may be, guys, let me know who your list of wives are. And, or maybe if you want to have a list of husbands, let us know down in the comments below. Let us know who your list of husbands or list of wives are. We had a lot of responses actually on Twitter. So we want to thank everybody for your responses for that. Those were awesome. Love every single one of them. Everyone's got their own opinion and their own lists. Tweet Tiffany. <laughs> Tweet them at the All Elite Pod Twitter, yeah. and it, we'll retweet them. It's mm-hmm. great. Actually, we had somebody that did a mix. They said that uh, they don't discriminate, so they mixed their list of husband and wives in one. I respect. List. I respect that. I, I thought that, that was pretty freaking awesome. So, but I feel you. I feel you. Day, I feel you, dog. I feel you, dog. Um, at the end of the day, Anthony Gayon is number one husband. So, 
<laughs> Alicia Toot is number one wife. <laughs> Mike's better. Two can play this game now. <laughs> Mike's better. Okay. Mm, debatable. Mike's debatable. Bubble. Debatable. But what above all? <laughs> Anywho, listen here, Hugh. Uh, let's get into the news and rumors. All right, let's do it. Of A E W. A E W. A E W. A E W. Um, all right. Let you can start. start. You can start. Start things right. up here. So I'm just gonna go into a little bit of this. So if you guys saw it today on Twitter, oh, Joey Janela put <gasps> a video out. Okay. Somebody broke into his car. See what? It's literally on Twitter in Philadelphia. Someone broke into his car, and they took his ring gear. Hmm. He said he clearly had eighty dollars worth. Like around in the open, they didn't take the money, but they took some like I think what he said like the European change or something. <laughs> they didn't even take the eighty dollars, and they took his ring gear. So what is wrong with these people and like the sick fetishes? <laughs> like now, I'm not one to point fingers, but Enzo, big cast, I put you guys at suspects number one. Oh God! I'm just saying, there's a lot of beef there. You don't think maybe they got inside? information on where his car is maybe they're in that area you know i put i can't just sit here and speculate like that but that sucks you know it's not ever fun getting your car broken into and stuff stolen especially ring gear so um just hit up denise there uh <laughs> denise got no time for anybody everybody hits her up and they said that they need more uh seamstresses out there and so. denise has time <laughs> maybe <laughs> oh lord i hope we have time for a family photo Family photo! Yeah. Woo! Color okay. footage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag color footage. Uh, let's get some other news, shall we? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Uh, let's go to... Oh, this one. This was an interesting article. So, AW is considering their own version of Talking Smack. Oh. Mm -hmm. AW has a lot of plans for their upcoming television show. It appears that one idea might be seeing them add some content to BR Live. Dave Meltzer discussed Talking Smack on a Wrestling Observer radio. Vince McMahon didn't like the idea of the show, which is why it's not around anymore. The Elite might actually find some real benefit for a Talking Smack, ta talking smack type of show. In fact, they are apparently considering it. This is a quote from Dave Meltzer. He puts, I'm, I actually think AEW should do their own version of Talking Smack on BR Live, and I know it's been talked about. They should do from 10 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. in the arena that they run after the show uh, show's over. Go to a th go to the thing and have guys show their personality and have them talk because I know that this would help. It freaking helped the Miz's career. So if you give those guys a chance and some of the, the guys can stand out in talking you that you don't get to see because of the, the perfect venue for it. So I actually like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's actually a really smart idea to do something like that. Uh, maybe not mimic it hands down or maybe go somewhere close to it. I think mm -hmm. a version of talking about because it was the most talked about thing for SmackDown when it was, you know, when it when talking smack was a thing like this was I remember watching it like making sure I tuned in to watch it because you never know what was going to happen. And we know the whole infamous one with the Miz and Daniel Bryan. That was probably the biggest quote unquote shoot interview uh that's ever been one of ever been seen in WWE. Like it's really, really, it was really, really good. It put Miz on the map even more than he already was. Um, so I think maybe AW could benefit from that. I think in terms of wanting to know how some guys are in mic skills, it's a good format to use. Let's see if they can go to that next level by using that format. I think they can do stuff like that. So and they can add comedy to it to get people to tune in more. Um, so I think I think it'd be a good idea. We'll have to see what the, they have planned for it. It's great. It's a great way to build, and it's the, the storytelling, as we always say. Yes, the storytelling. So important, which is so important to me, and I'm sure it's important to Kyle. But it's so important. Um, other news: Cody teases Tony Shavon and Jim Ross will call AEW match on TNT. Ooh, yes, ooh, yes. On the mm -hmm. AEW on the road to TNT episode. So too, right. uh, there was some nice build up to the match between Cody and Sammy, and that it takes uh, place on the debut episode of AEW on TNT. Sammy takes issue with being labeled with potential. He feels he's ready for the spotlight now and not in the future. The story is similar to the Good Hand comment that ticked off Sean Spears prior to the All Out match with Cody. However, Sammy still has a lot to prove. Tony, uh, 
Tony, <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that a lot lately. Tony talks to us um, from the command center. He reminds us that the AEW women's title is also up for grabs on October 2nd. However, this won't be the last we hear from Tony. Tony sits down with Cody to talk history, expectations, and his upcoming championship match against Chris Jericho. At the end of the interview, Cody turns the question around. He asks Tony if we'll see him in the commentary booth for any of the AEW shows. Tony says it's up to Cody since he's the boss. Cody just gives a knowing um, gives a knowing little wink. Something about Tony's voice calling wrestling on TNT just feels right. So, I'm excited. Like these two are going to have insane chem- chemistry together. A lot of people know about Tony Schiavone's history with commentary, Jim Ross's history with commentary. They're just going to mesh well. You add an Exp- Excalibur in there. You don't even need to, but even if you add him as a third, it, it's just going to be so well. So we know Tony Schiavone still has stuff that he's doing. So, but when he's going to be there, it's just going to be really good. We know it's going to be good. So. It's excitement. More excitement. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> Yeet. That's a classic. I think it was like our first or second episode was called our Yeet. second episode. Our first episode was Merp. The second one was Yeet. Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, so... Uh, let's go over, uh, we kind of brief touched based upon the, uh, the picture of the, uh, All Elite Dynamite, um, All Elite Wrestling hasn't announced the name of their television show, but it looks like cable outlets did it for them. YouTube TV also lists AW, uh, or All Elite Wrestling Dynamite as the name of AW's new TNT show. Uh, the name is Punny being Dynamite on TNT. But how are fans reacting? I actually just realized Dynamite and TNT. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Anyways, uh, fans should have seen it coming because AW laid uh, copyright claims down on Tuesday Night Dynamite and Wednesday Night Dynamite and now All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. The company also registered All Elite Wrestling Revolution. Some of our awesome readers contacted us to let them know that the cable guy did list that as a show's name for a brief moment and then changed it back. So maybe they're going to reserve that for a pay-per-view, I imagine. Um, So far, the reaction has been mixed. Uh, Apparently, Ringside News has conducted a poll on Twitter, and about 55% of the fans aren't fans of the new name of this, uh, as of this writing. Uh, Keep in mind that the new name, this is a new name, but with proper marketing, and it will probably grow a majority of people. Like I said before, it's not about the name. It's about what you show on that show, and obviously we know it's going to be. Uh, it's not people are going to forget about the name eventually because they see how good the television is. So um, we know it's been advertised uh, all elite wrestling dynamite. So again, I'm okay with it. I don't care as long as they produce good TV. I really don't care what they do. So woo woo love it woo. Uh, <laughs> so here we'll go into a little bit about your favorite with uh. You being Canadian. Oh. Let's go. Let's get into it. Dive in. Yeah. So fans in Canada are still waiting to hear how they will be able to watch AEW's weekly television show. Cody Mm -hmm. told fans in Canada to be patient and insinuate an announcement could be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. mainly believe the program could end up on TSN. Mm -hmm. Which Which is, uh, uh, for you guys that don't know, it's the Canadian version of ESPN. Ah. There you go. So, which aired on both uh, Raw and Nitro during the Monday Night Wars. Raw could air live on Monday nights on TSN, but Nitro was often uh, broadcast until Wednesday. WWE has since moved Canadian program to Sportsnet. So, uh, yeah. I think it's going to be TSN. I've read a lot, and I've done some, obviously being Canadian, I've done some digging. Um, it's almost certain that it's going to be TSN because... It's the most important part. Um, I know ESPN has the same thing. They have their they have ESPN, then they have branches of ESPN. Mm-hmm. Like there's that one ESPN everyone's it's famous for the Ocho, where they have like the crazy sports on. So TSN up here has five different TSNs. There's TSN one, two, three, four, and five. So um, from what I've read, they're heavily in talks and pushing towards TSN because it's a national sports network up here it'd be as big as tnt down the states up here because there's not a lot of sports channels up here that would carry it's either going to be tsn or Sportsnet. that's basically it for up here (laughs) so uh wb is heavy on Sportsnet. so i highly i mean it'd probably be good business for Sportsnet to do both 
but maybe there's something someone in WWE saying you can't bring these guys over. You know, they're a competition, whatever. So I wouldn't doubt that they're pushing hard on TSN. From what I've read, they are. And because TSN has the five different platforms, they have the room and wiggle room to put and fit AEW once a week on it. So um, even uh, Cody Rose tweeted saying, like, be patient. We have something in the works, which is great. Right. If there, I imagine if there wasn't something in the works, then we weren't going to get it just yet. I know we, uh, I know Canadians got kind of shafted tonight with NXT because no one up here was was showing NXT live on TV. Like oh wow! Was, so I thought it would be shown on Sportsnet where they showed the USA Network for Raw and SmackDown, and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So that first hour, Canadians up here got shafted tonight. So. I imagine that AEW probably seen something like that and said, okay, we're not going to follow suit. We're going to make sure we get this deal done before October 2nd. So I imagine it's forthcoming. In the next two weeks, we're probably going to get the announcement uh, of TSN being the home to AEW. So um, just have to be patient, folks. Just like me. I know I'm one of the most impatient people yeah. ever. You've been tweeting like crazy. So oh. it's coming. Like a couple of months. It's coming. Um, <laughs> I want to read this interesting story here that I found. Uh, by uh, the news website called The Sun UK. Um, this is interesting. So uh, Chris Jericho reveals WrestleMania insult that forced him and is the reason why he, he quit WWE. Um, so this is interesting. So the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla arrived at WWE in late 1990s. He became one of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era. Um, he was crowned the first ever undisputed world champion. Uh, that's interesting. So he's been the first ever world champion now in two different companies. It's pretty like awesome. That's a, it's a really good you know stat right there. Uh, Jericho stayed with the company for over 15 years before heading off last year to appear on New Japan Pro Wrestling before signing with Tony Khan's backed All Elite Wrestling at the turn of 2019. Despite being 48 years old, I gotta remember, this is crazy, dude. He's 48 years old. Like this is nuts. The wrestling legend continues to be one of the most sports entertainment's biggest stars, and he recently became the AEW first world champion to add another honor to his Hall of Fame career. Jericho's last run with WWE involved him being in a brilliant storyline with the Kevin Owens, which I remembers as the uh, Festival of Friendship storyline. This was the, probably the best storyline they did in years. It was so popular. Even when I was watching it this time, it was my favorite story to watch week. It was so good. <laughs> um, with the list of Jericho and them being best friends, it was so good. Um, he has now revealed that uh, that was supposed to lead to the main event of WrestleMania 33. But the showdown was demoted to the second match on the card. And he now told the Mature Audience Mayhem podcast that McMahon's insulting decision to change the placing of the belt was one of the biggest reasons why he quit the WWE in the first place. Jericho said uh, probably the best story at WrestleMania was Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, which it was. You you think back at WrestleMania 33, that was the story going into it. I don't care what people say about uh, Roman Reigns and The Undertaker, whatever you want to say, that was the story going into that card. It was the Festival of Friendship coming to full circle and facing each other. Uh, Jericho goes on and says, We were best friends and all the uh, dastardly stuff we were doing until turn me, turn on me at Festival of Friendship. Then we had the big WrestleMania match, the confrontation. Originally, this is going to be the main event for the world title. Kevin Owens was going to be the champion, and I was going to beat him in the main event at WrestleMania as a babyface. So Kevin Owens and, and Chris Jericho were supposed to be the Universal Championship match at WrestleMania 33 in the main event. That would have been sweet. I why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? Um, <laughs> and then this Chris Jericho goes on. This Bill Goldberg and Brock Lesnar had the match, and Brock really liked it and wanted to have a rematch. <laughs> he put Goldberg over, and then he had a rematch, but only if he won the title back from Bill Goldberg. That was Brock's idea, so they changed it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Vince said it's going to be me versus Kevin Owens for the world title at WrestleMania, and you are going to win the title. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Another one of these things. Like We saw the whole thing with Dean Ambrose. Oh my God. <laughs> it's funny. This must be how Vince talks backstage. Uh, then he says, next week he doesn't tell me, but I hear that it changed to Brock Lesnar versus Bill Goldberg. So they changed the storyline and they didn't even tell him. <laughs> like That's so bad. And not only did they take us out of the main event, and once again, just because I was told I have no right to to it and things change all the time, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. 
But to take us from the main event slot and then move us to the second match on the card that has 12 matches, I was like, that's a fucking insult. Jericho continued by saying, and I didn't realize it at the time, but afterwards, I guess about three or four weeks later, I was like, wait a second. We were the second on the card? It wasn't even the first match. The first match in the show at WrestleMania is always very important. He's got a, he's got a point there. Maybe even second only to the main event. But to put us on the second match in the card is an insult, and it doesn't even matter what I did. We had the best storyline of the year, but it doesn't matter. It's still not going to get me higher on the card and the second on the card only at WrestleMania. I need to leave. This is how this is how you know, guys. When the time comes, when you're put in that spot, and in, it's an insult as an insultory guy. Then I went through the whole thing, and I went on tour with Fozzy in the Tokyo Dome match with Kenny Omega. The whole new world of creativity opened up in this world, new star power of Chris Jericho, and we drew a lot of money from New Japan at the Dome show, and that was how the road to AEW started. Those matches in mm. New Japan were so good. So, I mean, that's a freaking insult. Like, to go from... You're being told by Vince that you're going to be the main event with Kevin Owens. This is going to be the full circle of this, this thing. It's going to be for the world title. And then they change it. And they don't even tell him. Yeah. And then they say weeks later, oh, yeah, you're going to be this. Actually, we moved you. It's not going to be for the title. You're going to be the second match on the card. Like, no wonder he quit. For a guy who's done so much for that company, no wonder he quit. So I thought that was an interesting story because I didn't know. Yeah. So I thought I'd share it. And being Chris Jericho being our world champion. It's an interesting story to tell. Oof is right. Oof. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's with AEW. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, I don't have any more news. I don't have any more news either. So, a little bit of a short news week, guys. Hopefully, get more by the next episode. And we'll have some more stuff for you guys. Um, still going to tune in. Uh, we're, oh, you mean, you hope you guys still tune in <laughs> next week. Uh, we're definitely going to have some stuff ready. I'm sorry uh, for that episode. Obviously, with being the elite and road to uh, reviews and some other stuff going on AW World, there's always seems to be something happening. So, and hopefully, I get an update maybe on my Canadian television deal, maybe you know, because I'm so impatient. But, <laughs> anyways, guys, um, before we end off, make sure you are following us on social media at All Elite Podcast on Facebook, All Elite Pod on Instagram, and All Elite Pod on Twitter. If you're having trouble in figuring out what trying to find us and finding the right All Elite Podcast, make sure you're going over to YouTube, going to the description box, and clicking the links I provide there for you guys just to click, follow, and subscribe. Most importantly, hit the bell icon for notification updates and a subscribe button. We are in a competition with Smart to Death and a Kenny for Your Thoughts podcast to get to 1,000. So help us get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers, guys. Share us on all your social media platforms. We are also available on the go on iTunes, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, CastBox, and iHeartRadio. Wherever you take your podcast on the go, guys, is where you can take us with you. So thank you for downloading the episode and giving us a five-star rating wherever you are listening to us. It is really greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Also, I I brought up a couple episodes, guys. Uh, ABTs, there's a brand-new store being made right now currently by me. It looks great. Tiff's seen it already, the beta. It looks really, really good. I'm excited to share this store with you guys with some new merch on the way, guys. APTs, the big revamp version, is coming soon. It's under construction, so stay tuned. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh is right. Ooh. <laughs> uh, we have Discord. Make sure you, if you are into Discord, download the free app. Chat with the wrestling fans out there and click our specific link down below to join our own Discord. And lastly, but not least, especially not least, give it out a big shout to our friends, these wolves with the song dead to me which is the official theme song of the all elite podcast you guys are great each and every single week thank you very much for letting us use that theme song guys you have no idea how much that means to us so i know you guys tune in every single week so thank you to you guys make sure you guys go follow these wolves guys the links to follow them and on spotify and such are down below as well and give them a follow on twitter and subscribe to their youtube channel these wolves Ow. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the All Elite Podcast, episode number 42 of this great podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, unfortunately, not live. I'm starting to get my internet issues fixed this week. Hopefully, we'll be back live next week. Um, until then, you can follow me on Twitter at Real Kyle Masters. Right down there, you can follow my co host at Loves to Dream82, right below her. I'm your host of the All Elite Podcast, the self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. 
always joined by my co she is the executive vice president of giggles the heartbreak chick tiffany and <laughs> or the librarian <laughs> tiffany whatever you want to call her uh the uh, owner of the list of husbands she's got a lot of titles <laughs> whatever you like to call her she'll love she'll laugh doesn't matter so <laughs> all right guys that's gonna do it wrap it up we'll guys see you next week for episode number 43 toodles